And a recent article from The Atlantic points out the downside of being rich in China. A 17% chance of being investigated and ending up in jail. The Who Run Rich List is China's equivalent of the annual Forbes Rich List. And according to one paper published by three Chinese academics, nearly 20% of those that made the Who Run listing have been investigated and arrested. Now, this has given Chinese media reason to call this and other rich lists fat pig killing lists, a list of targets most likely headed for the so-called slaughterhouse. Now, Rupert Hoogworth, the founder and CEO of Who Run Report, disputes the findings. Hoogworth, whose company has been publishing a list of the richest 1,000 people in China since 1999, says that the proportion of people on the list who end up getting arrested is no more than 1%. And now let's turn to Weibo to get some initial reactions on the fat pig killing lists. In China, if you want to earn a large amount of money, you have to interact with corrupt government officials. So, of course, the money you earn is not clean. China's largest criminal demographic? Government officials and the wealthy. This country's problems are institutional. How many rich and powerful people in China can say their money came from completely legitimate roots? Once the source of these people's wealth is examined under the sunlight, problems always arise. This is the unique characteristics of the rich and powerful in an even more unique society. There are two types of rich people in China. The first type is government officials. The second type is those people and organizations that have a good relationship with government officials. Actually, this news is a good thing. It shows that there is some sort of result from government initiatives to fight corruption. That this country's wealthy cannot withstand the investigation into the sources of their wealth means that there is a problem with this country's business environment. Business people that become rich overnight are a source of grief for this country's governance system. John Busey of the Wall Street Journal once made the observation that very soon after China's wealthiest get publicity, their share prices of the companies they own typically decline. Now, Boosie attributed this to the fact that publicity results in more scrutiny, not only from the public, but also from the government. Now, despite the number of high-level cases coming to light in the country, many more remain hidden. Wang Xiaolu, deputy director of the National Economic Research Institute, estimated that China's gray economy is worth nearly $1.5 trillion annually and growing. But citizen activism is making a difference. One recent example cited by The Economist is Gong Ai Ai, a former bank official who accumulated 41 properties worth hundreds of millions of dollars. After a citizen-led online search uncovered her wealth, the government started to investigate. Gong, who is dubbed as house sister by Chinese net users, was arrested in early February after police found she had purchased properties with a fake ID and household registration papers. And now let's explore what Chinese net users consider the source of corruption among China's rich and powerful. These original sins come from the social structure, the system of organization. The ones that end up in jail are those who have gotten lost in the system. I think we have stopped investigating and arresting corrupt business people a long time ago. We have allowed collusion between business people and government to run unchecked. We only start to investigate after these people become billionaires. Then it's too late because they have already emigrated. The rich and powerful. Notice how the two adjectives always come together. If a person keeps moving up the ranks without any hitches, or if they have someone on a higher level protecting them, then they will become richer and richer. Otherwise, they will get invested and may end up in jail. The political system does not change. The judicial system is not independent. Anti-corruption campaigns have become a source of internal strife. There is no such thing as most corrupt, only more corrupt. Deng Xiaoping, the Chinese leader behind China's economic reforms in the late 1970s, famously advocated to let a few people get rich first. During the last six years, the number of Chinese billionaires has risen from 15 to 250. But China's income inequality has grown to a level that is considered worrisome by United Nations standards. Now, less than 1% of the Chinese population, for example, 
controls 70% of the country's wealth, and perhaps that is not exactly what Deng had in mind.